All right, today we're going to talk about bringing in line work from Illustrator into Photoshop and painting with Lightroom. I'm going to start by creating some line work in Illustrator. It's a plan and a simple section, and then exporting that into Photoshop. So to begin with, you'll see that uh, there's a series of line work that I've drawn uh, in Illustrator using the basic concepts that I showed you last time. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to export as a TIFF file. I'm going to call this file uh, linework2.tiff. I'm going to set the color mode to RGB, uh, set it at high so that it's 300 dpi, and I'm going to click OK. There we go. Now I'm going to open Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I'm going to open up that line with two TIFF file. And you'll see that it brings in the line work that I created in Illustrator. Now it brings this line work in as pixels, as a raster image. But now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color in and uh, use this as a field for uh, painting light into these sections and plans. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this layer state. To unlock it, and I'm going to name this layer Line Work. I'm going to create two layers. I'm going to create one layer below, which I'm going to call Canvas, and I'm going to paint this layer white using the Paint Maker tool. So now I have a white layer, and I've got a Line Work layer on top. Now, in order for me to be able to paint on this layer and see the work below, I want to change this layer state. To multiply. So everything that's white on this layer is going to be transparent. I don't want black on it to be white. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to set that underneath my line work layer. I'm going to call this uh, light. Actually, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this digital light. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and choose my paintbrush. So I'm going to show you a way to use this paintbrush tool to essentially paint uh, like you would, you, uh, as if you were holding a charcoal or some other soft pencil. The paintbrush layer uh, has a default layer of brushes, but it also has, when you click on this arrow, a series of pre-designed brushes that I think are pretty good. And I, I tend to use the dry media brushes a lot. But you can kind of play around with the different brushes like natural, special effects, and other assorted brushes. So I'm going to use the dry media brushes just to start out with because I like the effects of this particular uh, brush. I think it's pretty natural. So you can see as I zoom up that the shape of this brush is, um, is pretty distinct. And I'm using the brackets left and right to enlarge, uh, make this brush smaller really quickly. So one of the main things to remember about brushes is that you want to keep your opacity to a relatively low opacity so that as you paint you can you can build up paint on top of uh, your strokes as if you were kind of building up uh, charcoal or other kind of media uh, in a drawing. You have this set too high to 100 It'll put down really hard washes and you won't be able to build up layers of material. Also want to set your flow to a relatively low distance so that when you press down it can react to the way that you're applying material to the, to the canvas. Now at this point uh, I want you to not worry about kind of drawing in the lines. I just want you to put some media down on the page. You'll notice that uh, just kind of building up this media. I'm going to be able to take away some of this stuff later. I just kind of want to get some, get some media there on the page. And I'm going to go ahead and flip my stylus around and use a similar brush. And I'm going to just start erasing away, same opacity. You can see how, as you paint and erase, how you, with the opacity set low enough, you can really treat this like you are uh, you know, dealing with some other kind of charcoal medium. Let me do 
increase my opacity. Okay. I'm going to flip my pencil now and drop my opacity down to something a little bit lower and just start painting the back. Now, depending on uh, you know, how you want to treat the, uh, the areas of light, like for example, at this window, you, know, you may want to grab this marquee tool, this polygon lasso tool, and strike an area that you want to that you want to mask. So this will prevent anything from being painted outside. You can flip your eraser around as if you had an eraser shield and start to you know, take away some of this darkness, kind of simulate a ray of light coming through this. So when you deselect that, turn it around, you, know, you start to have some, some harsher shadows. You can always kind of go back and soften that a little bit. We know that these section cuts are going to want to appear and you're not going to want a bunch of, of paint bleeding off into these, into these section cuts. Now, you know, traditionally, you, know, you might take your eraser shield and go back over these, over these cuts and clean them up. But in Photoshop, what's nice is that you can apply uh, layer masks to these areas and always keep these clean. This is how it works. So if you grab a marquee, Kind of zoom in here and get a little closer to this particular section right here. You know, you know that this entire area right here wants to stay, stay clean. So in your digital light layer, which has all your media in it, you're going to go ahead and apply a layer mask. Get layer, layer mask. And you're going to hide the selection. It's going to clean up that entire selection. Now what is that really doing? It's really just applying black paint to those areas that you want to keep the media away from. So you can, after the fact, you can go ahead and grab those areas. Make sure that you're on the mask, which is the, the dark square with the circle in it, not in your media itself. So make sure you're on the mask. And go ahead and take the paint bucket and apply paint to those areas. I'll go to the outside too, just to kind of keep that clean. Okay, I'm going to grab another marquee tool. And you can do this before or you can do this after. Sometimes I like to do it before. Clean up your sections. Clean it up down below too. What you're left with is you know, the beginnings of this kind of painted uh, inner area, and I would um, I would recommend kind of going back in and really taking advantage of that uh, that eraser brush. Make sure you're on your your layer. And really kind of uh, really kind of work the the media back and forth, painting and erasing. Kind of get what you get what you want. Now, once you're happy with your results, what's nice about being in this TIFF mode is that you can go ahead and file, save your TIFF, but save it with your layers intact. So under layer compression, it's going to ask you: Do you want to do an RLE, or do you want to discard your layers? You want to go ahead and keep your layers and say, okay, it'll warn you, it'll say, you know, including layers will increase file size. You want to say, okay. So you want to keep this TIFF uh, with all its layers intact so you can always go back and make changes to it. Okay, now what's nice about that is that when you go back into uh, Illustrator, I'm going to close this out because I'm going to open up my layout panel, my new layout panel. Okay, in Illustrator, or you may want to, if you're using Illustrator, where you're going to lay out your drawings. I'm going to use a tabloid uh, sheet, 17 inches by 11 inches. I'm going to click OK. I'm 
and set up my sheet, I'm going to go ahead and replace the TIFF file that I just created by calling linework2.tiff, replace it. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and place to scale the drawing that I just made in Photoshop. Okay. I'm going to save this as And what's nice about this is that when I go back into Photoshop and make changes, I'm going to go ahead and add a person in this view. I can go ahead and marquee a quick person. And I'm going to go ahead and erase away uh, some of this media within this talk to kind of reveal that person inside. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. So right over that tip, when I go back into Illustrator, it asks me, some files are missing or modified. Would you like to update them now? I click yes, and my person gets modified. So once you place your TIFF files inside your layout page, they will automatically get modified as you go back into your Photoshop files and make those changes.